So, there's no one in this room. There are no people in this room. This is non-duality. This is oneness, if you like. Doing its non-duality thing, manifesting as everything that is. Manifesting as everything that is, and what is, is simply what is apparently happening. This is what is apparently happening. Movement at the back of the room. A hand going up to a face there, a head turning there, an expression on the face there. We open the door to a late participant because God forgot to let us know that someone else was on the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if this goes up on YouTube and the viewers don't understand that reference to God, it's because something happened before the filming started, you see. It pays to be here in person, otherwise you miss stuff. Maybe the stuff you miss is the important stuff, who knows? Except there is no important stuff. There's nothing more important or less important than anything else, except to the mind. The mind is constantly making stuff important or not important. The mind which does not actually exist is constantly making stuff more or less important. So there's one of the many paradoxes that we might meet this afternoon. The mind does this and the mind does not exist. We may come back and look at that later if we like. But for now, we may just notice that this is it, even though there's no one to notice it, even though there's no one here. We might say the noticing that there is just this may happen. It's just this, it's just whatever's arising. This is the entirety. This is existence. This is non-duality manifesting as duality. More accurate to say this is non-duality manifesting as the appearance of duality. This is an appearance. It has no substance to it. Yet it appears to have substance to it. It has no substance to it, and yet, if we walk into the door, it certainly appears to have substance to it. We could say this is the grand illusion, the grand appearance with nothing behind it. It's like a dream. It's like a dream that seems so real when the dream's going on. And yet the moment that awakening out of the dream has happened, it seemed that, oh yeah, that was an illusion. That didn't happen. And yet in a way it did happen as an illusion. And yet it didn't happen. It happened as an illusion, but it wasn't real. This is happening as an illusion. This is the realist, the most real thing there is, and yet it isn't real. And that can't be seen as long as there's an apparent person there looking for it, looking to see it, trying to see it, trying to see through it. Or perhaps not trying to see through it, just experiencing it innocently and assuming, yeah, 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 this is real, of course it's real. Yeah, there's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, maybe 80 years of autobiography behind this, well not 80 years in this case, nearly but not quite, leading up to this apparently real moment and those 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, not 80 years are just a thought, and just a thought and now they're gone and they don't, it doesn't exist anymore. This is really I was going to say this is the heart of what we're talking about. This is really all we're talking about. I'm not talking about anything else. We're talking about the possibility of seeing what these words are trying totally inadequately to describe. 
And I'm not saying that these words are totally inadequate because you have the misfortune of having a poor speaker here today. These words are totally inadequate because words always are totally inadequate no matter who is speaking them. But it's all we've got to communicate with. It's all we've got to communicate thoughts and ideas with. There are other ways we can communicate, but words are all we've got to communicate thoughts and ideas with. Thoughts and ideas are hopeless here. They're hopeless when we're talking about considering, looking at, examining non-duality. But they're all we've got. So there's just this. There's just this. Time is an illusion. And when I say illusion, I don't mean something which is simply imaginary, that doesn't really exist. I mean time is an illusion, and illusion is something different to how it appears to be. There appears to be a flow of time. Without the appearance of a flow of time, these sentences couldn't be spoken, these sentences couldn't be heard. Without the appearance of a flow of time, this gesture couldn't appear. And yet it's just an appearance. In reality, there is just this, which is timeless. There is just what's happening. Look, and now it's gone. And now there is just what's happening. And look, now it's gone, and there is just what's happening, timelessly, eternal. Eternal doesn't mean forever and ever and ever. Thank goodness that would be a kind of hell, wouldn't it? The thought of sitting in a meeting, even about non-duality on a Saturday afternoon, forever and ever. But eternal doesn't mean going on for a very long time and a little bit more, which maybe some people think it as eternal means outside time. This is outside time. Time is an appearance, time is an illusion, time doesn't really exist. This isn't philosophy. This isn't philosophy. What's being talked about here, I mean, plenty of people philosophize about time. This isn't philosophy. What's being talked about here is something that's directly seen or it's not directly seen. And it doesn't matter a damn which, except that it's interesting to talk about it, maybe. The timelessness, the eternal timelessness in which everything arises as an appearance it may be directly seen or it may not be directly seen and in a sense who cares but it's not philosophy to whatever extent what's being expressed here is necessarily being expressed as ideas that doesn't matter so there is just this there's just whatever's arising a hand moving, a green t-shirt, a look of rapt attention on a face, a smile on a face, a look of attention that was perhaps not so rapt, who knows. This is absolutely all there is. Thoughts, feelings, Dreams, imaginings, longings, yearnings. Every impulse to move towards something, every impulse to shun away from something. Tastes, sounds, everything. The pressure of a seat on a bum. Whatever's arising is, that's it, is, that's it, is reality. No past, no future, no other space, no other place. No place from which I came here today. No place to which I will return after this meeting. After this meeting, 
meaningless phrase signifying meaningless because it's meaningful to the mind, but meaningless because it signifies a time which does not exist. So the suggestion here is, okay, this is kind of yada, 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 talk, 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 talk. The suggestion from here is all of this, everything that's being said here, can be, maybe, directly what we always have to stop and think about well, what unsatisfactory word to use to end that sentence with. And I always end up saying the same thing. This, everything that's being talked about can be directly seen. It's a terrible word. It's an awful word. I don't literally mean seen. It's a dreadful word, but it's the best there is. All the other words we could use are even worse than that one. So the suggestion here is, you know, we're not here, well, we're not here, well, we're not here, full stop. I was going to say we're not here to philosophise, but actually we're just simply not here. But the point of this, I mean, philosophy may be amusing, philosophy may be entertaining, it may be interesting, but it's kind of, it's kind of pointless, but then I have to add, so is everything else. But nevertheless, that's not what this is about. What this is about is the possibility of the direct seeing. And there is no one who experiences whatever is arising. There never has been a person, an individual, who experiences whatever is arising. And yet, whatever is arising continues, grateful time word that, but never mind, continues to impossibly arise, I could say, of its own accord, beautifully, wonderfully and delightfully, meaninglessly, without meaning. And somehow, when this is seen, there are no rules about this whatsoever, but somehow, when this is seen, that kind of spontaneous arising of everything out of nothing, of movement out of stillness, of sound out of silence, somehow the seeing of that often induces a profound sense of relaxation, a kind of a letting go. Non-duality, the seeing of non-duality doesn't have a sound, but I often say, well, if it did have a sound, it would be better. Ah, that's sort of ah, oh, this ah of relief. The seeing of what we're talking about here, there are no rules, but nevertheless, the seeing of what we're talking about here tends to induce a profound collapse of anything that the mind, up to that point, considered meaningful. Whatever the mind considered meaningful, beliefs, assumptions, beliefs about the world, beliefs that God would always text me to say there was somebody coming to this meeting who was late and I should wait a bit before I start. Whatever the beliefs are, I am saved by the Lamb of God, whatever it might be. Humanity will be happy when we finally ushered in the communist revolution, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. All beliefs just, we could say collapse, in the sense that they're seen through, they're seen as meaningless. Seeing this, seeing this can, I'm choosing my words very carefully because it doesn't have to be like this, but seeing this can produce a radical reorientation to the world. It can produce huge disturbances in, for example, our relationships. Huge disturbances in our orientation towards all, things, all sorts of things in life. Our friendships, our relationships, our work, anything. It doesn't have to. It may not produce any of that, but it can do. And very often, not always, that's because of this kind of collapse of this great edifice of belief systems that most of us carry with us, many of them unconsciously, through life. Just the very 
belief system that I as a person exist. I as a person and I'm autonomous and I have free will and I can make choices and I have a past and a future and some very important work to do on the planet to perhaps to save the souls of heathens to God or whatever it might be. Maybe if I really work hard I'll become Pope, who knows? I think I've left that one a bit late now. But whatever it might be, I mean it could be that or it could be if I live another two years, I might be able to complete my beer mat collection. I mean, who knows? You know, from the sublime to the ridiculous, it's all the same. I mean, this is a shock. This is a real shock. Collecting beer mats and saving souls for God are the same thing. In the sense that they have the same thing. God said they're not the same thing. Of course they're not. That's crazy. They're the same thing. In the sense that they have the same significance in the sense that neither of them has any significance except to the character who believes that souls must be saved for God or who believes that beer mats must be collected, whichever it might be. So it's not a surprise if sometimes the seeing of this is not just a kind of shock I wanted to say a personal shock, but it's not that. It's an impersonal shock. Sometimes, so it's not a surprise that sometimes the seeing of this is an impersonal shock, but sometimes it also absolutely shakes the foundations of our, let's say, social world and the world of beliefs and so forth. And sometimes it doesn't shake it at all. So there's no rules about this whatsoever. Have I kind of covered the basic ground there? I think I have. There's no person, there's no time, there's no place, there's just this. And that can be directly seen, that may be directly seen. And it may not be understood at all, and that doesn't matter. Or well, it may be understood. In which case this kind of yakety 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 about it might happen. <laughs>